<laughs> All right, so we're going to clear this out just for the heck of it. Whoops. Okay. Now you notice here that uh, I left the title and body blank and there was no message there. There's nothing that said, hey, these need to be supplied. But we did get validation or what looks like validation on votes, views, and creation date. And the reason for that is, in my model, votes and views are integers. And you can't submit an empty string for an integer. That doesn't make any sense. So we already have this uh, concept of type coercion errors, where the value you submit just cannot be coerced into the type of the property. Well, obviously, we, can, we need to give you an error message. But for things like title and body, we have no idea uh, by default whether you intended those to be required or not. Well, that's easy enough for me to uh, fix. I can go back to my question and let's make title and body required. Oops. Just copy that one for body. So I'm adding uh, a required attribute, uh, required validator. And uh, uh, while we're at it, let's add a string length uh, attribute as well to show off a different validation attribute you can use. Uh, let's see. Maximum length, let's make it 15. Minimum, yeah, that's good actually. All right, so now when I submit the form again, we can see that we have validation. So I think I put the string length on the title. So let's try just typing a bunch of stuff in there. And we see we, get, we have this uh, message here, the field title must be a string with a maximum length of 15. So, uh, so that's nice, but what about uh, client validation? Uh, I want this to work on the client. So one of the things we can do very easily is before a call to begin form, I'm going to add a call to HTML dot enable client validation. Let's, ref oh, let's refresh this page. Actually, let me go back. So now, if I go in here, and empty this title, tab out, we can see that we're getting client-side validation. Uh, watch as I, uh, I'll, I'll correct title, and then I'll just keep typing. You notice that the validation just pops up immediately. So this is a really nice way to get client validation uh, without any extra work on your part. Of course, this client validation works for, uh, the automatic client validation works for the built-in validation types. Uh, we have string length, regex, uh, required, and range. Range? No. Uh, ah, forget. Okay. I'll remember in like five, five minutes after the talk, I'm sure. I think it's range attribute. All right. So, uh, Great. So that's fine if your validation fits into those five rules, right? But what about the fact that uh, you have custom validation that you want to apply uh, that, that doesn't fit in one of those five rules? Uh, so uh, for example, maybe you have this idea that you, for Hack Overflow that you really want the title to actually be a question. And you kind of want it in the form of uh, maybe a journalistic question like who, what, when, where, why, and how. So. Uh, for the, sake, uh, for the sake of demo, let's, let's build the, out that, uh, that attribute. So I'm removing enable client validation, so we're back to the, the uh, server-side validation. And what I'm going to do is add a new uh, attribute here, question attribute. And I've already written this. So all validation attributes derive from validation attribute, which is uh, uh, in the system.componentmodel.data annotations uh, namespace. And uh, there's uh, one key method you must override, which is uh, is valid, 
And then there's another which is, that's very useful, which is format error message. So in this method here, uh, the first thing I check to see is if the value's null, and, and I just return true. Uh, and what I'm doing there is saying that uh, if the value's null, I don't want to validate it. I'll assume that you have a required attribute on that to, and let that do the validation for that. But if it's not null, uh, then I'm going to convert this to string, run it against this pattern here, uh, and I could have used a regex value except I have this extra bit of logic, uh, you know, for a contrived example, where uh, if you set must end with question mark, I'm going to change the pattern to it must end with a question mark. And then I just return true or false. What format error message does here is um, if the error message on the attribute is null or empty, and the error message resource name, so the resource name is the way you would, uh, instead of typing a, a hard-coded uh, compile time error message, you can specify a key into a resource file so that you can do localization, for example. So uh, if none of these are set, I'm going to return a default error message that says must start with who, what, when, where, why, and how. Otherwise, I'm going to use the message that uh, I'm going to call base.format error message and use the message that you supplied. So this is a way that my, uh, my attribute can provide a fairly nice default validation message. All right, so I've written this attribute. Let's go apply it to the question. Uh, one of the nice things is once I have this attribute and build out my library of attributes, I can reuse these uh, validation attributes over and over again. I only have to do that once. Just realized, uh, probably a bad idea to call that attribute question, huh? Is that question attribute? Great. Okay, that'll be fine. So now if I type in a question, this is a test. Oop. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so there I demonstrated a new feature of Visual Studio 10 where you can generate a class from usage. So what I accidentally did was uh, I, I gener uh, this is for those who practice test-driven development where you start typing out some code and you haven't even uh, a test code and you haven't written the class yet, then you can just say generate from usage. It's not what I intended to do, but that's what I just did. We could pretend that that was an intentional demo, uh, if you don't mind. So let's, uh, let's try this. Oh, I know what I did. I, the, my web project references the uh, class library, so I should have put that in here. Now let's build. And then in here I can just change this to... Uh, whoops. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, now let's submit that again. And, and great, we, we get uh, custom validation on the title attribute. So I can use that attribute anywhere and, get, uh, and reuse that all over the place. Uh, of course, it doesn't, does it really?